Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast. I'm your host, Griffey, here with a brief introduction before today's episode in the October Mega Marathon. We are so close to the end, but we still have many dark delights to share with you. Uh, today's episode is no exception, but before that, a teeny tiny bit of business. Please, please go to patreon.com slash Pod and support the show. It's been an amazing ride. And if you want to make sure you finish strong with all the episodes, you got to go to patreon.com slash Pod. Not only is that the only way to get our episodes on Kill List and Bordello of Blood and our feature-length commentary on the Japanese film House, you're going to want those. Trust me, those are great episodes. It also is the best way to show some love, help us grow the show, help us keep the lights on. We work very, very hard to put this on for you every year. And any kindness you could show us would be so very greatly appreciated. Again, that's patreon.com slash Pod. We have a wonderful community of people over there that already support the show. Uh, come join them. Come join us. Thank you in advance. Uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube. That's Film Alchemist. That's a free, easy thing to do. We're on all the social media, including TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube shorts. We have reels for everything, right? Uh, sharing those is another wonderful way to help out podcasts like us. That's free and easy. Just thumbs, shares, comments, all of that stuff helps us out way, way more than I can express here, right? Every little hand to help push this ship deeper into the water. Uh, we greatly appreciate the email is filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. So make sure you go check that out. Make sure you leave five star ratings and reviews. Another algorithmic offering to the podcast gods we appreciate that check me out over on looper you can see me from the waist up talking about films i actually just dropped one we really loved over there i made a video on the top five favorite horror movies of 2024 so far so go find that on looper that's that's me over there talking about my five favorite movies from this year which is stacked with amazing movies so i'd appreciate that make sure you go to misfitparade.net or .com we're one of those now. I don't know where we are in the transition by the time this comes out. So go check those out. You can see the movies I'm making with my buddies. Uh, our short film, Sugar Tits, will be out soon. We've begun filming the first segment of our horror anthology feature film, Mr. Cream Jeans Heidi Hole. So go show some love to the Misfit Parade uh, so that you can follow all the stuff we're doing over there as well. All right. You weren't here for that long-winded business. My God, sorry. You're here for another amazing episode. Today's... Truly a delight. We're talking about Cure. So this movie is a dark philosophical journey, right? Through what's in the hearts of men and women. Where does the darkness emanate from? What does it take to peel the darkness off? This is a very fascinating movie picked by a very fascinating guest. First time on the show, our friend Nathan Sellers, right? So Nathan, I don't know if he'll remember this. We uh, had our film He Sees All, right, from Misfit Parade was playing at the amazing Genre Blast. If you've never been to Genre Blast, you owe yourself a favor. It's one of my favorite festivals ever. Uh, amazing people, amazing movies. We couldn't even believe that our little movie got into a festival as amazing as Genre Blast. It was so fun. The very first person I met outside of the theater was none other than Nathan, right? We did a nice little how you doing, what's up. Didn't know if we'd ever talk again. Just a nice, pleasant moment, right? Come to find out, Nathan had a movie there too called The Watcher. And it is, I, I'm not kidding you. I'm not trying to blow smoke up his ass because he's on the show. It's my favorite short film I saw in our entire festival run. I think it is so absolutely stunningly crafted. It's beautiful. It's haunting. It It makes me feel empathy in a horror movie that a lot of horror movies don't uh, take the time to do. I fucking love this movie. You can actually watch it online now. I'll put the link in the show description below. So make sure you watch The Watcher. I fucking love that movie. Um, but more than the movie itself, I just I love Nathan, man. He made a new one, Methuselah, which is out doing great stuff. His movies are good, but he's better. Um, just a really nice, warm-hearted guy. Um, just really a caring person. He has beautiful prioritization, right, of what's important in life. Um, and that, that means a lot. You meet a lot of people that are not kind, right, or not genuine. They're narcissists, right, when you're out doing these kind of things. Maybe that's what people say about me. I don't fucking know. But what I'll tell you is that um, five-star movies, five-star guy. Nathan Sellers is one of my favorite people I've met uh, during this whole Misfit Parade thing, man. So I'm excited that he was able to come talk to us. I'm excited to continue growing our friendship. I'm excited to hopefully talk about movies with him for a long time to come. And when you hear the episode on Cure, I think you'll know 
exactly why. So without further ado, Cure with Nathan Sellers. Everybody, very special, exciting time today. I uh, want to introduce and welcome a new guest of the show, my friend Nathan Sellers. Uh, welcome, sir. Would you like to tell everyone where they can uh, find your stuff, where they can find you online, what you're working on? Yeah. Um, so I am a director, writer, and primarily editor. Um, you can find my work at www.lonehorse.com or lonehorsefilms.com. And that's my production company. Um, We're kind of a film collaborative where we help uh, other directors kind of produce their work, finance their work. Um, And so there's a list of films on there, a few that I've directed, a few others have. Um, I'm based in New England, so we primarily work with Boston-based, Burlington, Vermont-based filmmakers. And uh, yeah, uh, recently I finished the film Methusela, which is uh, playing at Film Quest later this month, which is amazing, really gnarly. Um, and uh, my film The Watcher is finally uh, bowing out and leaving the, <laughs> the film circuit after about two years of playing. But uh, we're finishing up at Telluride uh, Horror Show this month. And what a then- send off. Yeah. And then, I'll tell uh, you, they have exceptionally good rejection emails. <laughs> <laughs> I no, wouldn't uh, no, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. You, you probably don't understand the fine art of crafting a rejection email, but yeah, we get a lot. But, no, yeah. um, I tell everyone I meet when we're at the festival and we're playing, we've had our shows playing together a couple times. Yeah. And I'm always yeah, like, yeah. dude, you got to see The Watcher. Your short oh, is my favorite one we've seen on the circuit. Uh, so very excited you came today, and I'm not surprised you picked an absolutely incredible film. Would you like to introduce the movie for today? Yeah, so uh, this is Cure, um, completed in 1997 by uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa. Um, and uh, this is his second feature film. Uh, prior to this, Crazy. he made a slasher film, which is like fucking awesome. <laughs> Haven't seen it. Been trying to track it. But uh, after Cure, he goes on to make uh, Pulse, which mm-hmm. um, uh, just one of the great like kind of gay such horror an incredible ones. film. And then he goes on to do some drama, some others horror. But then uh, another notable film is Creepy, in I think 2013 when he returns to form with another horror. But uh, Cure is special because it was a film that I saw early on. Um, my friend's older brother worked at Blockbuster and Hell yeah. right when seven came out, he got the VHS <laughs> saw cure. He thought it was like this Japanese knockoff of seven. He's like, Oh, this would be great to poke fun at, you know, after yeah. we watch seven. And so we had this double feature and we watched seven completely traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, absolutely. should we even watch this other movie? And I'm like, Let's, we got it. Let's watch it. So we put it on. <laughs> My my friend and his brother fall asleep, and I'm just up watching this thing, like, completely captivated. And it was my introduction to world cinema, so it's a big film for me. And um, I, I don't know. It's so captivating. And mm-hmm. I think for me, when we talk about horror, you can usually pinpoint or kind of circle what terrifies you about a film, like, especially, yeah. like, a slasher. You're like, it's Michael Myers yeah. that's terrifying. A six foot six guy yeah. with a machete. Got it. Uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> feature, feature. You can circle it, pinpoint it. But the cool thing about The Cure is the antagonist, it's, ah, it's so hard to explain. Like, it's beyond the, the who we think the antagonist is in the film, the evil, what we're scared of, just uh, surpasses any expectations and it goes beyond. And especially because, you know, Kiyoshi Kurosawa is a filmmaker where his films are so grounded in reality, especially at first. They're constructed in such a um, thoughtful, creative way. Oh, and they're yeah. such, uh, they're meticulous, you know, and his editing is so spot on that you kind of expect whatever, you know, um, comes to terrorize to be something uh you know from society something you can explain something you can pinpoint but in this film it just seeps you know it it goes beyond that and uh that's why i thought cure is just 
just a great film to uh, start with, you know? Yeah. I mean, I was absolutely caught up in the, the kind of J-whore when all of that started coming in the early 2000s, right? Because one of my college movies, I saw The Ring in theaters. Yeah. Uh, the Gore <laughs> Verbinski Ring, right? And was fucking mm -hmm. blown away by that movie. Like, it was one of those early, like, this is what we're at film school for kind of movies for me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Saw it in the theater, drove two hours to go to the college where my girlfriend was. So that we could go to the midnight show and I spent the whole time just watching them watch the movie, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, yeah. I went on this bender of trying to find every Japanese horror movie I could, right? Uh, found <laughs> Pulse, this and that. Cure never was on my radar. That was something I found later on Criterion Channel, right? A couple years ago. And I gotta say, not to insult my, my youthful stupidity too much, I'm glad I did not find this movie. I don't think yeah, the yeah, yeah. there's something about finding it now as like a middle aged dad, yeah. That you really do know exactly what the horror of this movie is, and it's just yeah. the the kind of benign emptiness, yes, of everyday life, right? And that yeah. the theory of the movie, right? Because at its core, it seems like it would be a silly movie, right? That there's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. a guy who studied mesmer and learned how to hypnotize people, yeah. And you're kind of like, well, that seems like it'll be stupid. Yeah. And you're like, it's not what it, you take all that out. And what it is, is he just finds people and he just with like the slightest little push that this fucking absolute, not punctuated at all brutality is in us. Yeah. Like the opening scene, we start off the movie with just a guy like kind of jauntily walking oh, down yeah, the, he's down, like, you know, yeah. commuting home from work. It's like, oh, la 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 la. <laughs> and then he's, he's in a room with the hooker. Yeah. And to, like, what sounds like it could be the soundtrack of, like, a Friends episode, bashes her fucking brains in with the lead pipe. Yeah. And to me, it's fucking just brutal. that perfect encapsulation of yeah. it's not scored with, like, screeching strings. Yeah. It's not in close-up. It's just, mm -hmm. it's it's always pulled back, and it's just, this is just a benign diorama that this is in everyone somewhere. And it's fucking horrifying, because yeah. every person in every scene, you're like, that could be it. That could be the yeah. person. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, 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 totally. And I, I think that's one of the things that threw me at first was because like I went from watching seven to this opening and I'm like, this film's gonna be fucking brutal. But then how he uh the murders are done in a way that shocks you because you hear birds. Mm -hmm. It's sunny out. It's yeah. not happening in these places where you expect violence to occur. Mm -hmm. There's no expectation of the kill usually as well. So you start to learn the pattern of the film of how he hypnotizes people. Right. You start hearing water or silence. It's usually he's like, oh, he's beginning to hypnotize them. You see the cherry of his uh, cigarette typically too. And then iconically, he pulls out the lighter. Right. And you're like, okay, I know what's happening next. But then they jump to another scene and you're like, what? But wait. Yeah, and but then, then it's just two guys like, where's the paperwork? And you get lost in it, right? It's like, wait, wait a second. And then it surprises you when it happens. Yeah. And well, it's, it was, uh, it's the yeah, thing it that uh, I remember they did a scene breakdown once I watched on that jump scare in Exorcist 3, right? Yeah. And they talk about how that movie so expertly uses the expectations of an audience of a slasher movie, right? Oh, yeah. That yeah, yeah every yeah. time the camera moves somewhere, it's telling us. It's going to be on the other side or here or there. And how long that scene is, I think we forget, right? It's just like a cop going to get a coffee. And he gets a coffee and comes back and opens a paper. And then he leaves again. So, like, after the third or fourth time of someone just doing life, yeah, you stop looking for it. It lulls you. And this is, yep. like, the scene with the cops is immediately what I think about, right? He's like, yes, where's exactly. the paperwork? It's in there. Oh, I found it. Okay. And then he's taking the trash out. He's throwing it in. He's kind of, like, looking up at the sky. And then yeah. just two shots in the back of the head and just dragging yeah. him in with no emotion. There's no never emotion. like a screech. There's never a barbaric yelp. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, it, it's like the scene he was taking out the trash right before. It feels the exact same, exactly. like doing a, a fucking daily life task. Yeah. And especially because we follow like the main character, the detective in his daily mm -hmm. life throughout the entire film. And it sets up this expectation of what to expect when he gets home this pattern of his wife serving him. So we get used to these routines. So yeah. again, you're not ever expecting the violence to occur. Mm. And uh, I, I just, I, I think it's, it's so smart. And uh, the editing as well, because how he, uh, 
especially how he starts experimenting with uh, frame rates. I don't know, like when he's in the car after seeing the murderer's apartment, it's so unexpected. And you're like, wait, is this the same film? Because we have flashes of, uh, uh, of his wife flashes of uh, the monkeys that have been tested on and all of this stuff like that. But then it wraps back to this um, mundane, you know, grounded uh, environment. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. And then it yeah. happens again, you know? And uh, yeah, I, I just love the experimentation of this film, but how he can reset it and set you back to where you were at the beginning. Yeah, and, and it's it's the kind of movie we just like. I can't even remember the last movie we got like this. The the absolute it's kind of a dipshit word to say in filmmaking, but like the bravery, right? For yeah. lack of a better term, but like his absolute commitment to the vision, I guess the better way to say it. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize until rewatching it. Every shot in this movie is kind of just a long wide. And like yeah. when you go into the apartment, like, if a character's got their back turned and they're cooking, we don't cut into that, right? Like, now everything yeah, yeah, in yeah. modern cinema, we got to see everything, right? Yeah, it's like a exactly. super saves the cat kind of mentality. We got to yeah. see everything, and everything's... Vis- this one takes an approach where we watch almost as this kind of empty voyeur, right? So, like, mm-hmm. scenes when he comes home to his wife, we're just watching two people make dinner. And we get the sense that she's forgetful. And yeah. by the third or fourth time you're on that scene, it yeah. gives you this comfort level in a scene, right? Like you're at your yeah. own apartment to where when he opens that door and we see his wife hanging in the kitchen, yeah, it feels like coming home to your own house. And That's... like the, the terror just yeah. gets in in a way that you're, you're not on guard, right? Like when I watch mm-hmm. something like Terrifier these days, right? That's yeah. going to put the camera right in it cut yes. a bunch and it's just it's different you're guarded more against that whereas yeah. this one it's it's almost every fucking scene is staged like a play right. yeah and totally and what's interesting though is um watching it so many times i've realized that he starts to angle the frame slightly differently each okay. time we cut to the to, to say to his house when we come home to his wife to the point where if you compare the first shot to the last mm. shot we're at like a 12 degree difference now. Yeah. See, I hadn't and, noticed that yeah. until today. He goes to yeah. talk to um, Mia, uh, Mimia in the, yeah. the prison, right? The the, yeah. the hypnotist. Yeah. And when he comes home and his wife's not doing anything, but she has the dryer running and she just walks yeah. in and I mean, the, the lens now is like, it's like we're on a boat. Like it's breathing heavy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like we are imitating his inner seething anger. And you're yeah. like, oh, like these are things I just wouldn't have appreciated as a younger yeah, guy. Okay. That yeah. those kind of subtle tricks that are just reinforcing. And again, I just I think it's so. I w- I told you this before we started. I just never yeah. have that confidence in anything. Yeah. You start every time you're making something. I feel like you. The more you watch it, you start being like, this is where someone will hate it and turn it off. Yeah. And yeah. I got to change yeah, yeah, yeah. my okay. style to that rather than just having the 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 commitment to see it through. In this movie. Yeah. I mean, to the very last shot, yes. just yeah. never breaks from this kind of, because that's one of the things in the movie, right? Is he talks about how empty everyone is, right? And there's this real yes. loss of memory journey, right? Whether it's the hypnotist who may or may not have lost his memory, yeah. to his wife actually losing it, mm-hmm. to people leading these very normal, right, teacher, doctor, whatever, yeah. uh, lives, and then they commit a barbaric act. And can't remember it, right? We become this kind of vessel who is the scribe of these events, right? We're the only yes. person in the movie that is burdened with the memory <laughs> yes. of yeah, all of no. this fucking horror. <laughs> no, it, it, it's true. And I think vessel is the right term, too, because that's what the, uh, that's what, uh, what's uh, Mamiya mm-hmm. is, is a vessel to this. He's become empty in this way. He even tells the doctor, there's nothing inside me anymore. So I can understand you. Yeah, that's why he has all you. knees on the outside. Fucking and so he's brutal, this dude. vessel. He's trying to find a new vessel. Is what I really think the the film's about uh, to carry on um, this 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 work almost. Yeah, but let even, me hone in on that real yeah. quick. I wanted to yeah. ask you a question. Yeah. At the end, they seem to be telling us that he doesn't that he does actually remember everything because he's been gone for six months. Yes. And they have this beautiful, like, dialogue pattern, right, of him constantly asking questions. 
but then being very specific and when he does remember a detail. What do you actually think happens to him right before this movie starts? Uh, Mamiya? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, to, to be honest, I think it's kind of a, a rite of passage. I think he's getting mm-hmm. ready to find a new vessel. And the more um, I, uh, uh, I came to that theory is following his language. I, when he doesn't know who he is or where he's coming from, he doesn't mm-hmm. know that's he's, he's got some kind off. of scar on his back. Yeah. He has a coat with a name tag. That's yeah. It. I, I think it's to lure people in um, because there's this moment when he's about to hypnotize them that he's fully alert. And it's usually after yeah. he's done something, a big action, like with the school teacher, he go ventures into his kitchen. He knocks over the oranges and they roll onto the floor, gets his, I uh, guess him to pick it up. Then he jumps into the other room gets him to focus on him and now that he has his full attention that's when he snaps into it and now he want he's curious about him even more mm-hmm. and he's uh he's he, he, he's not someone who's really lost their memory and so i think he's putting it on and um the other thing too is like when he's talking to uh takabe like he's saying things like you're special or you understand yeah, you can hear nobody me. understands us yes exactly yeah. um also, like uh, uh, the idea of um, this isn't the real you. Like, yeah. you don't know what you. So, whenever he talk about, he tries to Dude, explain his that life, fucking like, that's sentence. That's yeah. the kind of horror that you only get as you start aging. I feel like, yeah, because it's not a <laughs> like we do a lot of body horror now. I think we're in a real moment post COVID and politically, where you know it's in the news all the time. Like people deciding who they want to be, right, and their gender, yeah. their marriage, all this stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think young people understand that, and it's a visceral thing. There's something about being middle age, going to a job you hate every day, yeah. a marriage that you just haven't put the work in, so things are faltering, or God forbid, right, your spouse, partner's going through something and they're changing, yeah. uh, medically, right, kids, whatever, yeah. Yeah. where that just, they don't see the real you. I yeah. talk about this all the time, like one of my biggest fears, because I used to be a fucking madman when I was in my twenties. Right. I was one of those, like <laughs> I will party my way to being Steven Spielberg uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for the younger listeners did not work. Do not recommend. <laughs> um, and you just, you don't think about that stuff, right? You're out howling at the moon all the time. As you get older, I tell my wife, some of the things that like I butt up against is I, I just tell her, I was like, some days I just feel so fucking small. Like I just feel so fucking diminished and like, there's no shine. There's no sparkle. I can't go out and, do something like I just feel fucking squeezed and I have a great life and a supportive wife and healthy kids. Like I've got nothing to complain about, but the nature of aging and routine. Yeah. You start fucking like, I got to do something crazy. And this movie, (laughs) that one line, they don't see you. They don't know who you are. You are. There's a fucking terror in that. And what it really is implying is that Takabe lives every second of his life as a lie. Yeah. Which is fucking yeah. terrifying. It, it 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 is, and there's that there's that scene where Dr. Bay goes to the hospital when he finds out that he's been moved from the police station to the hospital. Oh and yeah, he's trying to get info out of uh, Mamiya, and so he's trying to say like, "What do you know? Who are you? You know who you are." Mamiya is just the entire time saying, "You don't know who you are. You're yeah. not the real you." And he's his dialogue this, traps are dialogue. just unbelievable. <laughs> like they're amazing. both so incredibly good in this movie. Uh, it's in, and it, it's to the point where Taco Bay flips out, and then it's like, yeah, like I struggle with my wife. You know, like this idea of like uh, my wife's a burden, my life isn't great, yeah. I can't do my job, and he's, he's basically <laughs> saying like everything's been a front this whole time. In a weird way, uh, Mamiya is pulling this out of everyone he meets but with uh with uh Takabe, it's almost like he wants him to just like like just like empty himself out of all of this so he can become yeah. a vessel for what who's the you know, only what person in the movie he's honest with it's the yes. fucking serial killer <laughs> yes that exactly. alone is a fucking terrifying <laughs> reality right it's just yeah. that's the only guy he can like it almost plays as if he admires him for being empty and just going with the flow Right, he's been in his yeah. apartment with like the monkey by the drain and shit, and he's like, "This is not a bad setup. This is not." Well, like, that's well, insane. like, I think yeah, Mamiya even says like, "Oh, you want 
you want to hear from me or like you're here to talk to me like he's like this is this is a uh, uh, um, basically you're here to get it off your chest because you can't do it anywhere else and like talk about even says like as a detective i promise not to uh, uh lose my temper with my wife yeah. lose my temper with my colleagues and and so like uh it's funny because mamia uh always takes it as like an honor like oh so you feel like you could just let your hair down with me and that's exactly what happens is he just um is he that the moment the he energy. knows yeah. that's the guy when do you think he pegs him i think he pegs him uh, even like sooner him. because he even says um you know you're the person so did i uh, like uh, oh right yeah good when, point, good point. That, yeah 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 well because there's even that point he's trying to smoke in yeah. the thing and talk is like fuck you and he knocks all the shit off and i was like oh that's gonna be because oh, yeah. you pause the movie and you're like fuck they got the guy yeah and it's not like seven where there's like 25 minutes you're like yeah, they've yeah, got like an hour left four. of this movie <laughs> and you're like yeah. what what are we gonna do and you're like oh the game is is how are they going to keep playing in these long uncutting shots of him blocking water and fire? Yeah. These elemental forces of hypnotism. You're like, yeah. Oh, that's not it at all. Cause one no, of the questions no. you're left with is, does he get hypnotized? Right? Like yeah. him and uh, the guy who plays the doctor Sakuma, yeah. right? You start wondering, you're like, did they actually get hypnotized like the others? Or are they just, the influence of him yeah. is opening things that they have been suppressing. Right. And not because I yeah. wonder, because Sakura, Sakura or Sakuma, you see with the X on his wall, he was watching this yeah, old grainy like, video. He, he sees yeah, yeah. the X, right. We saw earlier the cop who killed his friend miming out, yeah. slicing a guy with his, like, you know, his little coffee stir and shit, which is a great fucking scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it's like, we see the patterns of the people who do this. Yes. His doesn't seem to fit that, right? He even chained himself no. to a pipe, and it looks like he killed himself. He's still Blood yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. Everywhere. everywhere. So you're like, is that the same? Yeah. Is that different? Is this something you can inflict on yourself, or does it always have to be on others? I think by yeah. the end, the movie is telling us that Takabe may have gone to that hospital and done this to his wife, yeah. right? And that was kind yes. of a flesh sacrifice, right? Yeah. They have already lied to us once about her death, right? In an unreliable yes. narrator yeah. sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. the movie's not worried about giving us definite answers. No, it's not. Yeah, but it, again, that kind of adds to this this overwhelming dread. For for sure, and I think part of what really makes the film unsettling is this conversation that continues after the film, where you're debating what's real and what's not. And you're, you start realizing how fucked up a lot of these situations are, or even the idea that he was probably being hypnotized since the first time he met, uh, or Takabe was being hypnotized from the first time he met uh, Mamiya. Yeah, because in that like, you laundry remember, room. Yeah. yeah, in that laundry room in the dark. The cherry. He has the cherry out, oh. and we know that that's a big signifier. So from the first moment, then you look at all the other elements, like, it's almost like the uh, his other victims it was the short process of getting Taco Bay's attention, getting the uh, the special person's attention. Once he has it, he almost plays them in like this is a long form, mm -hmm. you know, um, hypnotic suggestion thing. And and you can kind of follow it too. Um, there's that moment where then he pulls out the lighter. And I feel like that moment is when he solidifies it. I think it began with the cherry in the dark where mm -hmm. you kind of see his cigarette and he's waiting for him almost. And then right when, um, because like he, he has that vision of his, you know, his wife hanging, he has the vision of the dead monkey. Um, I think it's, it's beyond Mamiya getting in his head. I think that's the beginning of the hypnosis. And I think it continues yeah. until that point. And yeah, at, well, at that scene end, too. That's yeah. where he lights the lighter, and yeah. he's like, "You can't talk without this lighter. You can't talk without the lighter." Looks and like it I was like, yeah. "Is a spirit coming from the ceiling?" Because his partner's oh, always yeah. like, "You can't, you the can't water. understand why criminals do stuff." That's the classic. The devil made yeah. me do it. Yeah, yeah not yeah, realizing yeah, yeah. this movie is truly about a devil that made you do it. Just you the devil <laughs> is in all of us, right? Yeah, um, and that yeah, the water drips down and puts out the Zippo. Yep. And then it leaks and down as like this water. ashy water, right? Almost like a melding yep. of the two of them, which yeah, I thought exactly. was kind of beautiful. 
Yeah. And, and, and we always see water in all of those moments with uh, the people he murdered, whether it's at the beach with the teacher, mm-hmm. uh, with the doctor. He even knocks over the glass. And when she goes to look at him, he goes, Dude. look down at the water. He's like, yeah. That's and like, uh, his performance is so fucking so terrifying, dude. It's oh, my God. It's uh, it's 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 so unnerving when someone is so calm in the most uh, fucked up situations, chaotic situations. And I, I feel like this film uh, masters it in this way of like, there's, there's, there's no real flux in his performance either. It's just, it's steady as a heartbeat the yeah. entire fucking time. If and, anything, uh, yeah, there might just be moments of like subtle relief, right? Like, cause he's talking to Takabe. Yeah. He doesn't feel lonely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's not like, meeting. it's not like a yay. It's just like very subtle, like when they're talking to like that room full of cops. Yes, exactly. And he's like, "You're up here with me for a reason, Wait, dude. You're not one of them." And he's just like rolls his chair. He's like, yeah. "Fuck you." <laughs> but that's that's uh, I, and I think in that moment too, uh, he asks the guy who's like head of headquarters or whatever. He, he says, "Who are you?" When he mm. um, when they start asking him questions, the guy starts getting frustrated. And he will not uh, veer from that path. The question yeah. is simply, who are you? And that's the question he's asked everyone. Yeah. And what's interesting is like, if you think of the title of the film, he's almost trying to cure people. I was you know, going to ask way you of this. Like, At the yeah, end of the movie, what yeah. is the cure and what is it fixing? I really yeah, have been so, pondering that all fucking day. And uh, I, this is funny. I, I was discussing this with my uh, uh, 14-year-old. Mm-hmm. because uh they began watching it with me and we were talking about in the end when he gets to um that uh that barn or that structure where we think that yeah. maybe this is where this uh this ritual is passed down or where this stuff is practiced originally and he finds uh that recording device and he starts playing it we hear this thing about healing hands that we hear i'm not gonna about, lie that scene yeah. reminded me of your movie Oh, okay. yeah. So maybe this was something that crept into your mind yeah, somewhere. It, dude. it probably is because you have the founding father in a way yeah. instructing others. Dude, you're, I, I bet you're right. Um, it's but, crazy how you just watch something and it gets in there and you just, don't think about it. And then someone's like, yeah, it's there. oh, did you like this movie? You're like, oh, yeah, I did like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, but in that moment, he, it's, it's about this idea of healing others. And when he asks the people, who are you? They go straight to the, oh, this is what I do. Uh, yeah, this is my job. Front, this is my job. I'm connected to this person. Um, yeah, the teacher's be... like, I'm a teacher and I have a wife. That's it. <laughs> and and that's you're like, it. damn, dude. <laughs> but then almost, it's almost like a purging of like uh, uh, like phonies. Like he's just like this evil holding coffee. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> releasing fury on the world. But honestly, I think he is kind of, trying to uh yeah what is japanese for poser (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) but it's 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 that's such a good question like what are they trying to uh uh, cure uh is it part of our human condition that uh, um i I don't i don't know but it's it's, tough uh, man because like think of the last scene right so we see that he fucking wastes uh mamiya right and he's like you're dead he kind of waves like he's like this is the end of you and he's like no 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 he does the matumbo finger finger r.i.p um (laughs) and then he he fucking shoots him right and then he goes and listens as if now he's the guy yeah you see the flash of the dead wife who's on like a a hannibal lecter dolly like a fucking appliance dolly in the basement of the nurse you're like is that real because earlier the doctor yeah. had said when he dropped his wife off, he's like, just till this calms down, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, you look sicker way than sicker than wife. she does, yeah. right? Because yeah. he's burdened with all this other shit. The next thing we see is this kind of matched scene, right? Where he's sitting there just fucking cleaned his plate. He's having a cig. He's like, yeah, bring the car. He's fucking smoking. He is unburdened, put back together, Ooh. filling yep. himself up again. Yeah, He's seemingly back to zero. After the murder, after killing his wife, possibly, he's okay. 
And yeah. the previous scene, he's at the diner. The lady, it's like one of those things that drives me nuts because of how I was raised, where I was like, you never let someone take your plate if there's food on it. You have to eat everything on your plate. Yeah, yeah. My mom would lose her shit. <laughs> um, and it's just, he, he can't fucking eat. He can't think. He can't do shit. And this one, he's so calm. And he lights a cigarette, but we don't see like a close up on the lighter or the cherry. Yeah. Nothing, nothing big, right? And then all of a sudden, we yeah. cut to this waitress. And she walks out, you know, her boss says something. She walks over, grabs a knife in clearly like not a pie cutting way, like a stabbing way. <laughs> and we just cut out and just we listen to the ambient sounds of a street, a block, a neighborhood, wherever. Yeah. Yeah. And so you could say that he is cured, right? Like yeah. he, he physically yeah. looks cured of everything we've seen ailing him. And you're like, is that the sacrifice of the wife? Is that defeating evil? And the yeah. wife was just a vision of like, the bad path he averted. Like, we don't know at all. We don't even know what that diner scene yeah. is truthful. Yeah. No, I, I totally hear that. And uh, there is that point though, where Mamiya tells them uh, you'll be born again yes. and that it will make you happy. Just like me, yeah. this idea of becoming empty. Um, and so, yeah, well, to me, it was like, yeah. to your point, right? When he shoots him in the bar and you're like, this is not a movie that's telling us you yeah. can defeat evil. No. This is yeah. not a movie where you can slay the monster and be a hero, right? It just, no. it's, it's that, you know, be careful ye who hunt monsters thing. And so he is inherently reborn by becoming a murderer. Yeah. And no, so you're no. like, the cure that's is true. not to shoot and destroy evil. That's not the cure. I yeah. doubt the movie's telling us the cure is to fucking kill your wife like a test monkey. <laughs> yeah. And so it is this somewhere in between, like, how do you live with the darkness in you, I guess? Yeah. And I think, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or whatever, I wrote a paper on this for uh, graduate school and it was about expectations, just the mm -hmm. word expectation. And looking at this film through that lens, the expectation of uh, the wife, the expectation of him as a detective, the expectation the people that are murdered have. Um, and uh, I think that's maybe something that uh, Kiyoshi uh, Kurosawa was talking about too, of like, we live in a way where um, we do what we're expected to do. Um, and that becomes our life, right? Um, yeah. And I, I don't think Mamiya is a model example of what to do. But it's this idea of freeing people of this expectation, freeing people of um, uh, this everyday life that isn't really the real you. Um, yeah. There's something way beneath that. And that's what he's always revealing. And I think, again, the people who answer in the most shallow way possible of, you know, and have this uh, follow um, uh, society's extra expectation. There's, they're yeah. the ones that go. <laughs> when you don't have like a burning passion or truth, you are in a men's room peeling a guy's face off by a yes, urinal. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a harsh punishment for just people doing the basic jobs of society. But to your point, though, I think yeah. it's something that I'm sure you struggle with a lot, right? Where it's, you know, you got the kids, the job. If you're on a creative pursuit, that takes so Filmmaking takes so much, like a disgusting amount of work to get very little back, right? And there is this like, expectation setting is kind of the root of all evil in our minds. Right. Yeah. No, which is, sure. you know, I, I heard a guy talking once and he's like, dude, in 20 years from now, you would give every dime you have sacrifice a goat, whatever to come back and be as healthy and young and happy as you are right now. Yeah. Right. Wow. Like just to be who you are right now, right. right. With that level yeah. of health and youth, that would be all you want. And you know, even when you're on a pursuit, like you're making a movie, well, it's not as good as that movie. It didn't make as much money as that movie. Yes. Um, you know, some fucking dipshit on X, you know, said I'm a cuck. Whatever. You know, like, you know, these things that it's like, why does that fucking matter? You know, someone else yeah. sells a script. And you're like, oh, I got to sell five. Like, there's there's no yeah. there's no point in life where we let ourselves just be OK. Yeah. And be happy. And I think to your point, maybe the movie is the cure for us. Right. It's the chance for us to sit and be like, hey, man. Maybe I should take a step back and, and <laughs> yeah, be happier yeah. and grapple with these things in my own life. Maybe because I don't think anyone in the film, the title applies to mm -hmm. at all short of you're saying maybe, yeah, Takabe is cured of mundanity, but now he's going to be this fucking, you know, plague rat yeah. of murder. 
yeah no no that that that's true i think one thing to look at um uh, as well is um how many faceless people are in this movie like when they when we get to find the video where we see someone practicing this this uh, uh um this type of hypnosis mm -hmm. the person who oh, is I love that. hypnotizing is off screen right you only see the finger tracing an x right and even the woman at first um it's it's kind of uh distorted we don't really get to see her features and finally when they open a book and trying to find out you know the the, the stranger who kind of takes uh mesmer and like brings it to japan in this way right mm -hmm. he has no face and the only time we see his face is through a window and it almost feels like this reflection and it's is is he really there because uh yeah he peels back the Sakuma. plastic and there's just like a faceless yeah. picture faceless picture well, even there. Think even of when the, Sakuma, yeah we yeah, don't see guess, the wife and the pink negligee that the teacher kills yeah, we don't exactly. see, uh, you know, the lady at the start. She's so far away, Way. and yep. she's shot in this kind of classic horror movie, yep. you know, misdirect, which is, you know, oh, her boobs are out. You're like, oh, but she's a bloody dead body. Gross, um, yes. you know. But it's just like one of those, like you're looking at her as like this is what she was, right? A body to yes. be used. But and before yep. you sink into it, you know, these yep. are distractions the movie deploys really mm -hmm. well. She's another faceless victim. Yeah, you exactly. know, and the movie is just fucking filled with it whoever's gonna die in that last scene presumably we don't see yeah. them we don't and see it's them as well. it's just this constant one scene the the doctor is literally peeling the face off of that guy yeah you, he, well, literally no she's face. taking the fucking face <laughs> off yeah he's nothing he's unmade yeah. yeah 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 i i think that's something um I don't know if you write this way too, but when I'm writing a script, there'll be an image that I fall in love with. And then I yep. kind of think of like, how do I implement this in other scenes, like mirror it. And I think some of uh, some great films, um, you know, countless films do that, that where they don't even just mirror a, uh, an image, they mirror this idea and it becomes this pattern. And it usually makes a script stronger because you see this continuity. And I think, the idea of no face, this, this the facelessness of this is not the real you, you know, like, I mm -hmm. think this is this pattern that she kind of creates without this throughout the script where it follows even the pattern of sound. Like, yeah, there's like almost like a yeah. water drip sound. It's yes. kind of metronome throughout, style throughout a lot of scenes, a yeah. lot of this stuff. And um, I think some of the best films are layered that way. And if you want to talk about the magic of this film is that he perfects each layer. Yes. So you have, uh, you could say the concept or of the narrative and all these things he's interweaving um, with uh, um, the idea of uh, um, expectation, the idea of uh, um, of honor, the idea of who uh, who are you, you know. Um, but then you go into sound design. He's letting you know what's happening just by sound. Like mm -hmm. when someone's going to be hypnotized, there's it's silent. Yep. Then there's water. And you hear a click. That's the pattern you continuously hear. He kind of perfects that. When Takabe starts kind of losing it with his wife, the washing machine is his temperament. Dude, at first, right? it is just in the middle. And at the end, it's just whipping and whipping. Yeah. And it's it's so exaggerated. So he, he, get, he perfects that. And then visually, too. Like... Uh, he, he perfects every layer. So when it comes together, it's, it's like, it's super tight. It's super deep. And that, and I think that's what makes the film masterful. If, if that makes sense is he just yeah. like hits it on every point and every layer. Well, it's one of those things with filmmaking is there's so many artists involved and there's mm -hmm. so many chances to make a bad choice mm -hmm. that undermines unravels. Doesn't feel like it's part of the same piece Yeah. Um, through no fucking fault just like you know you have to make so many choices what are the chances they're all good ones yes. this movie makes, makes all good all choices right choices and it's a fucking miracle when you see a movie and you're like i think they fucking nailed everything right and well, i i yeah. love an open-ended right like i i don't yeah. mind that ending at all because mm -hmm. again the movie is telling us we're not uh mamia is not the monster Right. He makes yeah. other people the monster. And yeah. so yeah. even destroying him, you're like, that's not going to fix it. There there was crime before him. There's not a case file that goes back 
20 years, right? There's like eight people. We've yeah. seen all but maybe two or three of them, right? The movie starts yes. and he's like, this murder looks like another murder. Very, we see yes, almost exactly. all his victims. So who was doing that before, right? Prior. If this exactly. ritual started, who's carrying on? You know, the government yeah. suppresses a cultist. Okay, but clearly they've still been among us. Yes. So maybe yeah. Takabe's thing at the end is he has a completely different way of inflicting the pain and misery That's around true. him, right? You yeah. you have no idea. The movie just tells us is that within every fucking room, every benign task, every boring day, every relationship, there is a fucking horrible devil lurking constantly. Mm-hmm. And every day that it doesn't fucking jump out of us and commit carnage is a gift. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I think my 14 year old said this, it's like, uh, they pointed to the point where uh, Sakuma said that with uh, when someone's hypnotized, they won't go against their morals. Yeah, their moral code mm-hmm. is still the moral their code. code is, is intact. So is Mamiya testing these people to where their morals are? You know, and they because the, the school teacher he seems like a nice enough guy. Never but had if, a prior, if, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But like, was Mamiya like testing that in this way? where you know he kills his wife and he's devastated there's that amazing scene where you track with him you stay on the detectives so he goes out of scene and then he runs back into the the frame and yeah, he has bashing this his face on the wall bashing yeah bashing he doesn't want to be him. seen anymore yeah, <laughs> yeah again, no face um but um we see that but at the same point like we we don't know the heart of this person and that again yeah. something that we can't really uh um Get well, you know from, what? You know, exposition so the thing like I clued that. in on that one is when he's like, "Ah, oh, the lady in the pink negligee." Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And in your mind, yes. you're like, "That's a hot well, image, right?" Know. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah he's exactly. like, "You saw her," and he has that yeah. like maybe she's been stepping out on him. Like again, it just <laughs> it's that little bit oh, of like. Yeah. So I'm taking a context clue, and I'm like, "Oh, maybe he's just really insecure." Yeah. He's a school teacher with a hot wife, and he's worried. Yeah, right? no, she's just, yeah, because I think he even says right. it's like she just stays at home. Okay, so when he's at school, he's building up these fantasies of her as a philanderer. Yeah, and maybe that's and again, maybe it's that small that's with it. the doctor. It's just like that first time you cut into a body, you love that, really? yeah. right? Like you were really into taking someone apart. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just who knows, man. And I think that's yeah. one of those other, you know, main character syndromes, like a common phrase now where. We all think we're like the center of the universe and the star. And you're like, dude, every person thinks that. Yeah. Like you matter so fucking little in the minds of almost everyone around you. And there's just this rich, deep, infinite backstory that no movie or book could ever capture. But the world sees you a certain way. You let the world see you a certain way. Yeah. And where are those fucking friction points, you know? Yeah, and I think Mamiya taps into it. <laughs> Yeah, because he, he always are, says that, too, where yeah. he's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And he goes, I want to know about you. You, yes. Right? Like, yes. he's excited to peel that back and see what's in there. Yes. And so, exactly. I, it's just such a, the traps of this movie yeah. are brilliant. And I love that the movie just never feels like it has to veer to a good guy, bad guy shootout, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. a really shocking sound punctuation, right? It just, yeah. it really reminds us. And again, I think the scariest movies, as you get older, I think one of the like dumbest horror fan arguments is like, this movie's not scary. It's yeah. like, well, bitch, that's not scary to you, right? Like yeah. Terrifier's not scary to me. It's gross. Yeah, exactly. Well, like I get why you would be scared of a clown with a fucking murder weapon, right? Yeah, like I yeah, see yeah. that character and I'm like, I understand how that's some people's, fucking worst nightmare this one to me is what the very best movies do which remind you is that there's no beatable end boss there's no thing that like you can know you have all the answers you can read the right passage in a book and it's exercised and you'll be happy this is just saying like it's a sopranos ending right like this just goes on forever and everyone you meet could now be the holder of whatever this fucking thing is that we've seen throughout the movie and and I one thing I was gonna say too is like uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa did a lot of gangster films before this, and what That's he came, shocking, you know, yeah. like three or four <laughs> like a year for like six seven years before he had the finance to do the slasher film and then this, and what he what he pointed to was that 
when it comes to crime, when it comes to violence, when it comes to evil, it's something that we could maybe try to conquer within ourselves. But when it comes to the greater world, there's no, you know, war, real war on crime. There's, you can't solve these problems. It will just continue. And yeah. Continue. Well, like there's no answers for like why a Dahmer pops up, right? Yeah. We can try yes. to get in his brain. And yeah. like maybe these factors accelerated or made it worse. You're like, there's something different yeah. with that guy. Yeah. Like there is yeah. a fucking level of evil that most of us physically cannot get past, right? There's like a physical yeah. revulsion at the thought of these these things that some people don't have. Like everyone yeah. around you could be a fucking absolute monster. And like I love stories that take place in that. What happens when like the basic reality you're in breaks? Right? Yeah. Zombie movies do this all the time. It's like yeah, yeah. now there's no rules. The rule is who has the gun and is willing to fucking kill the most people to be in charge. And how how fucking far are we from that ever? And this movie just does that, but in our day-to-day. -day, like, uh, Halloween 1 is a great example, right? Yeah, yeah. That movie's scarier than Friday the 13th one because that is your house. That's your teenage kid. That's the street where you trick-or-treated as a little boy, yeah. right? Michael Myers yeah. is a more faceless, undefined thing in that movie. Even though he's a serial killer, right? He's a little boy we see at the start. By the time you see him at the end, he's a silent shape. Yeah. Right? It's no, that Spider-Man sure. thing. We could all be Michael Myers or everyone we know could be. Yeah. When you get further in the story and you're like, ah, it's a brother, sister, Celtic, you know, curse of the Thorn. You're like, all right, well, that's that's not <laughs> yeah. as terrifying. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know that person. Yeah, yeah, compared to, yeah. Yeah, sure. whereas this, it's like literally every person in this movie. Have you ever met a cop? You ever met a doctor, right? Has your <laughs> yes, wife ever yeah. uh, acted strange for a day? Yeah. Anyone. How about a school teacher? We all had a fucking school teacher, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> this could just be anyone at any time. And the best movies just remind us that every second of every day is scary. Or is it it's day, crazy yeah. how we live on this giant rock spinning through space, heated by a giant fucking explosion, you yeah. know, fucking infinite miles away. And we're just yeah, like, yeah. it's cool. Everything's fine. Yeah. This is all good. Life's great. <laughs> yeah. Like the horrors <laughs> that we just don't acknowledge constantly to get by. And then you see a movie like this and it's like, I'll remind okay. you. Oh, and, it, and yeah, this is the kind of movie that like sits with you. Oh my God. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I can't tell you how many theories I've had on this film. And I think I'm at this point where it's just kind of an amalgamation of everything, you know, thought I've had. And it, it's hard watching it and not kind of constructing a new one because something else will pop out. Yeah. You're you, following you know? a detective. Yeah. 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 And so, <laughs> and I think, I think again, that's the beauty of this film. It's uh, there's so many layers that you can get lost in. So by the end, you might have a different thought of what the cure is, what the meaning behind it is. And like, uh, for me at first, like, yeah, Mamiya is the antagonist. He's, he, you pinpoint him. He's, he's, uh, uh, he's evil. Right. Yeah. The more you watch it, like you're saying, it, it, it transcends that, you know, like he's just, you could kind of say he's the point person, but it expands way beyond that. And, uh, I think, yeah, well, he might've been a victim thing. in this long chain, right? We don't like, yeah, and, he was dabbling in stuff in college, but yeah. we don't know. He becomes we obsessive in the way that Taco Bay becomes obsessive before he becomes the best. Yeah. And that's another pattern throughout this is where curiosity goes a little too far. And you can even see that with uh, um, uh, Sakama. Sa yeah, Sakama, like his yeah, interest pulls him to the point where the doctor, the psychologist, is when he even goes and he visits uh, Mamiya. And that's when you know it's done for him. He's doing this research. He's getting pulled in. He goes to the hospital. He and even then, tells Takabe, don't yeah. talk to that guy. Don't it's talk. dangerous. Yeah, he don't go. Don't get in too deep. That's the whole thing. Yeah. He, he always says, don't get too deep. Don't get too deep. But then he's at this point where he himself goes too deep, speaks to him, and then it like strikes. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's terrifying. And again, I'm, I'm glad I rewatched it now when I can deal with existential dread, right? I think as a young kid, I would have watched it and just been like, ah, that's not intense. That's not scary. You know, uh, whatever. I'm not scared. Like, now it's like, these are the kind of movies that fucking rock me. Right? Oh, yeah, like, when I watch them, like, that shit is, like, I watch, you know, what is it? Like, a ghost movie now, and it's like, I'm not getting out of bed. 
Yeah. Like, if I'm in bed and you're like, oh, throwing books around the room, I'm like, whatever, dude. I got to I gotta work tomorrow. <laughs> All right? Like, take me or don't. I'm not being possessed or haunted. Uh, you oh, know, probably even funny. like a slasher. You're like, I'm not fist fighting you in my underwear. Like, if you're going to yeah. get me, get me. Yeah. Uh, this is the kind of shit that, like, yeah, is fucking yeah. is brutal. And again, I just, I think we're in a kind of golden age of horror right now. Yeah. The past couple of years have been just filled with splendid, Pretty wonderful awesome. films. Yeah. But, you know, even my favorite movie of this year, The Substance, right? Oh, the Substance yeah. is so fucking good, and it's so stylized and powerful. But it's one of those movies that kind of grabs you by the throat and rubs your face and everything. Yeah. It's no, not yeah. a movie that lets you sit back and ponder, right? Like, yeah. it's it's a fucking missile of a movie. We do not get very many movies like it's this like yes. where we sit and just and just – are held captive and it's not it's not like a thrill ride it's not a roller coaster it's not you know we're not blasting off they're not throwing buckets of blood on us it's just for like two hours you're just like i want to get the fuck out of here so bad yeah no no and it's the films that really seep in you know that just Mm. uh, take their time too that i think have the most effect like a film like the wailing wow Oh Did my god! Did you see god. the wailing? Yeah, so fucking good. South Korean yes. film, like that was influenced by Cure, and you can kind of see it where the begin, yeah. beginning you see his home life, everything. It just it's so structured. You have this normal pattern until you see the pattern go off slightly, and then a little bit more, and then you know that's when you know we get into more of the you know body horror and you know yeah I love like, their, their kind of detective like movies where it's like I don't believe in any of this shit. <laughs> And then they're like, yeah. well, it is my kid, maybe. All right, I'll listen. Yeah, yeah, and then, okay. like, 30 it's minutes later, they're like, fuck! I know. <laughs> and uh, but I think that was one of the last films that I saw that kind of played with this. Again, I think here is a lot more reserved, and uh, you're more of an observer than you are with the way. Yeah, Memories of a Murder feels very inspired very, by this. Yeah, very, yeah. And, and he that one's more said, of a rooted kind of a thing, but yeah. Yeah, and, and, and he, he's even said that here is one of his favorite films too and yeah memories of I th- a murder you can see that lineage like through yeah. right but again i i'm just and to your point movies that age with me and and change when i watch them like yeah. me as a different audience member i'm watching a different movie yeah those no, are th- so like this is one i'm glad that you brought because now i've revisited you're like i'm gonna yeah. check in with this one <laughs> regularly right and just just kind of you know this cure for the soul thing like hey man stop complaining it's not that bad (laughs) be a little more appreciative of your day to day uh you know i think it's an important it's like my wife's always like every man uh when they get married should have to watch fatal attraction oh yeah i was like yeah Yeah, that'll do it that that would fucking put the fear of god in me for sure uh, maybe okay. this is just like for life for existential crisis. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Once once you hit forty, you watch Cure. Yeah, you sure. know, yeah. As yeah. my writing partner well, says, he's like, I don't need any more existential crisis or thinking about it. But I, no. this one felt just right for me. <laughs> yeah, same, same, same. All right, man. Well, that's it. A great talk cool. about uh, the movie. Do you want to remind everyone uh, where they can uh, find your stuff? Yeah, uh, so you can uh, go on over to www.lonehorsefilms.com. And nice. uh, again, you'll see a list of films. Uh, I think The Thaw, uh, directed by Sean Temple and Sarah Wisner, a film I produced that's still playing festivals. Uh, Methuselah, my new one, will be uh, hitting some fests uh, this fall and uh, winter. And uh, yeah, we usually post all the updates there. And uh, I think. What's my handle? At N Ben B E N Sellers as my handle. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You guys want to find that. I'm very excited for when Watcher drops and I can share that yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Once your That's amazing funny. festival run comes to an end. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, 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 I told you off air, but I think your work is so consistent, so awesome. And, oh, thanks, uh, man. I just can't wait for the feature. It's going to be fucking bananas yeah mr cream jeans hidey hole keep your eyes out you know like uh, here we're, we're writing very heady existential pieces <laughs> love it of course yeah all right guys you know the deal 31 days 31 pods we'll be back tomorrow we're coming close to the end of the october mega marathon i hope you guys are enjoying it as much as we are